boom, 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 boom. Anyway, <laughs> this is the Super Mario Money Management, and I'm going to have a little bit of fun with this. Uh, I need you to watch the whole video. I go over the money management by level here, and you once you understand this is fixed ratio, uh, the money management style, and it, which trades by levels, you'll understand why I used Super Mario. So go through the whole video, and I'll come back towards the end and explain this graphic the, that you see here, as well as the rule set, uh, which you see here uh, at the very end of the video. Um, so enjoy the video, and I'll see you soon. Educational video here, and I'm going to also provide you with a link to this website um, where they, they go over and they bring up five money management strategies for serious traders. And I think this is a really good article. Now, I already have a video on money management, and I'll post that in the room as well. But I want to look at this from a different perspective and uh, use OPW, other people's work. Um, you know, uh, looking at it from somebody else's point of view is a good thing because um, it gives the, uh, at least for me, the ability to look at things outside of myself. So you want to travel outside of your own home and your own comfort zone uh, from your own perspective and look at the world through uh, somebody else's point of view. And that's what I'm kind of doing with this right here. So this is Crush Pro Trading, and this is their uh, article on five management money management strategies for serious traders. Now, all of these methods you can use, but at least this gives you a pathway. And this is important. Uh, the key is that you have a pathway, you have something that you can use uh, that stick to it, a, 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 basically a money management formula. Okay, that's the key word there, formula, of which to use. And you can use various ones. You don't have to stick to any one. Uh, you can use different ones. Maybe you have different degrees of success depending on your trading style and uh, the profitability of the system you're using. But there is one thing to note is no matter what you use, you need to have positive expectancy. And this is one of the things, because a lot of people like to use uh, the bots and all of this for trading, you know, leverage, uh, which I'm kind of against, but there's nothing wrong with it as long as you have positive expectancy. I have seen nothing but uh, non-positive expectancy for most traders out there. And I'm not gonna name names, it's not my business because I really don't pay attention to them because I find 90% of traders out there to be losers. And that's just a statistical fact. Um, I've grown my balances over time and I've done well, even in bad markets, you know, where maybe I don't grow as much and maybe I'm just flatlining for a period of time. But I've grown my balance over time. And I see a lot of people gambling out there and they have big ups and then big downs and they just go up and down, up and down and they end up generally at some point blowing their accounts. Now, let me ask you, do you want to be that kind of person where you make a lot of money and then all of a sudden it's all gone? Think about that for a moment. And if your answer is no, then start paying attention to money management and build a formula. I don't care what type of formula it is. I mean, unless it's a martingale, which I'll go over in a minute. But uh, anyway, uh, build a formula that works for what you're trading and understand that you need positive expectancy. And this is one of the reasons why if you're using leverage on a system, uh, let's say with the Cornix bots and you're using different traders or uh, whoever, whatever, um, understand that you you have a set amount, your delta, your, your fixed amount of money that you're going to use, right? Maybe for some that's a few hundred dollars. Maybe for others it's a few thousand. Maybe for some bigger traders, a hundred thousand dollars isn't that much money, and they use a hundred thousand. 
uh, it varies depending on your size and that that is different for every person and um, you know and don't compare yourself to other traders uh, that's a silly thing to do um, there's always somebody smaller and bigger than you and that's just the the facts of life um, what you want to care about is that you develop a methodology that will help you grow in the future if you really enjoy trading. If you don't, then just gamble it away. But make your life simple and just make a beeline for Vegas. And uh, there's lots of beautiful women and flashing lights and um, you can have a lot of fun there. I've, I've had plenty of fun there. Um, but you won't generally make any money by gambling. You'll generally be giving it away. Um, do keep that in mind. But uh, you might have a lot of fun doing it at least. With crypto and, and trading, and doesn't matter if it's forex or commodities, whatever, uh, you're doing it from a, your screen. It, it's boring. Um, there's no girls. There's no drinking. There's no fun. You know, nothing to really see. <laughs> so why on earth would you want to go over and uh, blow your money away um, and gamble by gambling? And uh, the answer should be you don't. So let's go over and take a look at this article. It says uh, five money management strategies for serious traders. You have the 2% rule. Um, this uses a percentage of capital and this is symmetrical. There's two types of uh, uh, money management that is the basis of money management. You have symmetrical where they use a fixed amount per trade uh, depending on your capital. And then you have asymmetrical. And asymmetrical is kind of like where you're going from levels. Let's think of it that way. Um, and this allows you some uh, ability to be flexible within the, the realm of you losing and winning. And the one that I want to focus on is um, fixed ratio. Uh, and it, this sets your delta to determine where you increase and decrease your position size. And this gives you the ability to, when you're doing poorly, you reduce your trade sizes. And when you're doing well, you increase your trade sizes. And so that basically means you're increasing your sizes when you're winning, decreasing your, size, your trades when you're losing. Now, one of the things about money management, this has nothing to do with risk management. And it has nothing to do with how much money you start with or anything like that. This is just a formula. And you can apply it to any balance. And, um, uh, you know, and it, it, it has nothing to do with your risk. You know, how much you, you can set it to 10% or 5% or 2% uh, per trade. Uh, that is up to you. Your risk tolerance varies between one person to another. I know some people that are very low risk tolerance and they don't grow that much, but they don't lose that much either. And then I know some people that uh, want to take 10 or 20% on a trade, which is crazy to me, but th they're out there and um, they also don't use money management formulas and they usually disappear very quickly. So keep that in mind. Now you have two different main strategies. You have your martingale and anti-martingale. And what I'm going to focus on is your anti-martingale strategies. And um, your martingale me methodology is basically uh, very simple. See, you increase your position sizes with losses. Um, whereas on anti-martingale, you decrease your position sizes with losses. Okay, it's basically that simple. And again, I'm going to have a link in the... Um, the video to this article so you can understand uh, you could read over this as well and uh, you have to ask yourself what type of trader are you and this will define what's the best money management strategy for you and uh, you know there are several different types uh, of money management formulas you can use I uh, will tell you the one that I like and that's fixed ratio. And I think that works for most people. And um, it, it's, it gives you the ability to trade based on levels. That's why I call, call it, or I've called it to, to make it 
entertaining for people, Super Mario Money Management. Because you're, it's like a video game. You're, when you get to the next level, you increase, and you, the better you do, the, the bigger your returns are, the more coins you have. So you get more things, right? And, you know, so that's what it's a, the worse you do, the, the lower the levels you go on, and you're basically reducing your risk by doing that. So it kind of like balances out is the idea behind it. Now they talk about fund management and independent trading here. I'm not going to go over that. That's not important. That who cares? Um, uh, what money management is not. Money management is not risk management. I've gone over that. Yeah, risk management has nothing. That's what you do per trade. And uh, if you don't have good risk management, you're going to not be trading for very long. That's where you're over leveraged. A lot of people like doing that, especially if they're new, because they, you know, when they, they want to make a lot of money very fast. Most people do. But that's not the way trading works. And money management is not position sizing. That's going back to risk management right up there. So that's kind of redundant. Uh, it's a good part to read. Now, um, it says here money management is important because it will give you a strict path to follow in order to reach your goals as a trader. Good point. So let's go over that. You are on a journey or following a path. And you want to grow your account and do well. Now you have to navigate. Sometimes you're not going to do well. Um, so isn't it best if you're not doing well to limit your trades and uh, reduce your losses? And when you are doing well, isn't it best to increase your trades, trade more, and increase your sizes, trade more money? Makes sense. Based on what? Uh, your money management, which will go over and allow you to grow. This is where the formula comes into place. And this gives you, uh, it builds discipline. So you're following a path and you get to build discipline. And by doing this, um, you will, over time, become stable. That's the most important thing, especially if you're a new person, is that you become stable and get used to trading. Because there's nobody out there that just um, is a the best trader and the you know the, and doesn't have drawdowns. Everybody's going to get hit at some point, and it doesn't matter how good you are. Um, you get the wrong type of market, and you have to deal with that. And the ones that stick around are the ones that can handle the bad markets, like right now, which we are currently in the crypto market, right? Um, so basically, this gives you a, a path to follow and builds discipline as a trader. Now here, the first one they have up is a 2% rule. Now this is a static rule, so basically, you know, um, your trade size is always equal 2%, so that's symmetrical. You know, it's not trading based off of uh, uh, levels, so, you know, you can go over that. Um, they talk about it's good for accounts or a million, you know, and a lot of this is based off of uh, commodity pricings of contracts, uh, not important, not of interest, but you could read over that. Gives you a different perspective. Next method is fixed fractional. And this trades one contract per X amount of dollars that you have. So your delta can be set at a certain, let's say, $10,000 balance, um, your position size is two contracts, they say here, uh, so that's basically 20. Um, so for every 10,000, uh, they, they apply, and again, this is very much like what you saw above, and uh, you know, this is, it, it's not really interesting to me, it, it's kind of uh, more risky. Uh, optimal F method, a good thing to read. Now, one of the things is each one of these methods, you could just go over and uh, copy the, the name, this, 
and put it into Google and explore it more. I don't use any of these methods. I know how they work, but they're, they would be more for sculpting, uh, depending on the strategy. And I don't really need to do that because down here, number five, fixed ratio. This is the methodology that um, I use. Now it was developed by Ryan Jones. It wasn't developed by Ryan Jones. Ryan Jones wrote a book on it uh, and he showcased it. And his book is popular called The Trading Game, which this is one of the books I would recommend people buy. And um, now fixed ratio focus on profits made rather than the size of the account. So basically what he's saying here, it's asymmetrical and it goes by levels is the, the uh, you know, the, the gist of it. And that's based off your delta, what you're trading with. And I'll show you that in the next, uh, in uh, the screen captions towards the end and go over that. And um, uh, let's go down here. Uh, let's see. Beginning trading with one contract, once you've made $1,000 in profits, increase your position size to two contracts. Okay, so this is trading by level. If we look at right here, that's what he's basically saying. This is asymmetrical trading. So this gives you the ability to trade. You get up to a level, and then you double your, your position size. And you get up to the next level, you do it again, and again and again and again. So what does that basically mean? When your position size is increasing, um, you know, you develop a system, a methodology that you do well, uh, you're doubling your position sizes. Now, what happens when you, let's say you have a drawdown? You do the reverse. So you lose, you turn a thousand into 500 you reduce the position size. So you cut it in half because that's what you lost, right? So think of it that way. You're trading by position sizes. Now there's a variability in this built in between the levels. All right, you might take, if you're doing 2%, you might do like uh, 10, 20 trades between the one level and another before you increase by 100% or decrease by 50%. So this is where the variability comes into place. And it's a really good methodology for most people to start with and to basically trade for uh, on and on. Now you can try other uh, methodologies if you want. You can read up on them. I don't really think it's necessary because it, this becomes more complicated because uh, there are other uh, points of which you would want to make it more variable depending on your methodology but that's something you have to learn over time before you decide to use very you know uh, different types of money management and that's where it becomes more complicated and that's fine as you grow maybe you'll get bored of just using one methodology but this right here is your best bet uh, to start off with. And, and there's a simple formula to, to, uh, to go with. But there's one thing you have to understand. And I'm going to go over these points too. Is that number one, whatever you use, you need to have positive expectancy. All right, so keep in mind those two words right there. Positive expectancy. And if you don't have that in your trading, that basically means you make more money than you lose. Whatever system or formula you use. I have seen so many of these leveraged traders have a, a, a period of drawdowns that take them out of the game. So they make $1 and then they lose three. Um, that's not good money management. That's not good risk management. If they're doing something like that, that's not positive expectancy. They're losing more than they're making. And this is the 90% of people out there. And I don't care what, you know, and they try to obfuscate and, 
and pretend that they don't. But uh, when I look at my melons, I know it's grown over the years. And them, um, they're all paper traders. Uh, they just go on from one system to the next and they always change their strategies and always doing something different because they do not really make their money from trading. They make their money from marketing and selling people their bad ideas. It's kind of sad, but that's, that's the truth of it. Um, but anyway, in the article, it says uh, some tips here. And I would read these, accept the risk. And, you know, accept the risk. This is basic philosophy. Uh, always know um, that you can lose and never invest money that you can't afford to lose. That's one of the basic rules of trading. Never invest money you can't afford to lose, right? Um, you're taking a, a risk uh, in anything, uh, you know, and uh, it doesn't matter if it's business or trading or uh, real estate, any number of things, but that that's one of the first things is understand that you can lose as well as you can gain. Use real stop loss placement. Okay, now this goes back to um, the meth the ideology of uh, uh, trading with uh, leverage. If you're trading commodities, futures, uh, forex, and you're using leverage um, options. Uh, you're going to have to have stop losses. And as you know, um, in the room, there are a lot of people, in, even in VCT, that use leverage. So they're going to have to, in turn, to uh, not blow their accounts, use stop losses. This is where you use a percentage, uh, a 2% a trade or 5% a trade, uh, maybe even 8% a trade, whatever that may be. Um, a happy medium is generally around five, two to five percent on a trade, uh, especially if you're starting out. And one of the other things I tell people is if you're starting out with a new uh, system trader and you're following signals, whatever it may be, start with a small balance and see is what I would recommend personally. I would start with a small balance and see if I get positive expectancy. Do I make money from the trades? Um, do my drawdowns outweigh my gains? If they do, then it's not positive expectancy and I should move on. And um, a lot of traders don't have the numbers over time uh, because they get stopped out more and they lose more than they make. And that's not positive expectancy. Uh, they could try to change the game, you know, play games with the, and that's marketing. Um, here, have a positive reward to risk ratio, risk to reward ratio. And basically, uh, that just may, means for every $1 you lose, you want to make so many dollars, uh, two to three or five or whatever. Uh, so if you're wrong, uh, uh, a higher percentage than you're right on a trade, so you make a trade and you're wrong um, six out of uh, ten times. Uh, if to counterbalance that, you only risk one dollar for every three that you make, even if you're wrong the majority of the time, six out of ten times, you still come out ahead. Make sense to you? So. That's where your risk to reward ratio is. And a lot of people don't use that correctly. Uh, even traders on this site in VCT. Um, go over and examine that and say to yourself, is that wise for them to use uh, that type of um, risk reward ratio on their trades and see what they are. If you see that you're losing more than you're making on a trade, then understand that you have to have more wins uh, for your losses because the losses are larger than what you're winning and that's bad. Um, understand market volatility they talk about here. That's a good point. Uh, volatility equals profits to me. Um, in the main room, in the platinum room, I don't go over uh, leverage trades. Won't do it. 
um, I don't have to worry about being stopped out because there are no stops on my trading. I'm not using leverage. I don't have to go over and uh, that's not a, a point of interest to me. But volatility just means prices are going up and down. And, you know, I'll go over the technicals of the marketplace, but I don't have an expectation. I just need the market to be volatile, to go up and down. And that's how I make my money. Uh, a trader that's using leverage, uh, they have to have stops. They have to know exact levels of which they're in and out. And they have to use good risk reward ratios along with if they're halfway intelligent, uh, money management. If you're talking to a trader and he doesn't know anything about money management, but he understands everything about the market, then he's an idiot. And he's not a professional trader. Uh, if they don't use a formula for money management and they're giving signals, I have nothing to say. And this is why you know, it's kind of, it's laughable to me uh, at the very least. But anyway, uh, keep that in mind. Money management will give you a pathway to grow. It will decrease your losses and increase your profits over time. And it will help you develop the most important thing of all, discipline as a trader. And um, that's what you want. Um, be aware of market correlation. Eh. Be adequately funded, well, that's subjective. Some people start with $100, some $1,000, some $100,000. You know, uh, money is variable to, from one person to another. I know people that think a million dollars is a, a small amount of money, so whatever. Uh, be smart when adding. When you are right about the direction adding, your position will greatly improve. Eh. This, again, you, you don't let your emotions dictate your results. Um, if you do, you will blow up at some point. So I would kind of overlook this one. Uh, this is a recipe for disaster. Uh, have no position. When you don't always to be in the market, I repeat, staying out of the market is a big decision as getting. Okay, this is, again, this goes to discipline um, and feelings. And I don't get caught into the field of you know, feelings. Be psychologically prepared. Uh, this is a good point. Nobody likes to lose money. That is very true. Uh, but if you have a money management formula, you will be more psychologically prepared for when you do have drawdowns. You'll have a formula in place to help protect yourself. This, again, will build discipline over time. And let's see what they say in conclusion. Money management is more common sense than rocket science. True, it is. Uh, well, maybe the optimal F method comes close. No, optimal F is not that complicated. Read up on it. Uh, maybe I'll make uh, individual uh, videos on the different types of money management and how they are calculated, but it's not that complicated. If you can understand basic math as a, a uh, maybe a fifth grader or fourth grader even, you can understand optimal F very easily. And uh, the best money management comes are acceptable when it comes to drawdowns that you can occur and the one good fit for your personality. All right, basically you're saying you, different types of money management can fit different types of personalities. That is very true. Let me take a sip here. I need to clear my throat. Uh, and what, the, what that means is that there are different types of money management out there that will fit one personality versus another. Some people are more risk adverse and other people are more risk takers. And there's a balance. And um, so that's, that's a good point. Uh, one money management should be implemented once you have proven a strategy. Okay. What he's really saying is once you've proven a strategy is... Positive expectancy. And of course, they are promoting their site from this point on. But what that means is the strategy or methodology you're using in the marketplace is profitable, right? So you can make more money than you lose. And yes, everybody needs that because no matter how good your money management is, if you don't have a, a profitable method of trading and have that positive expectancy, 
then this will only slow down uh, your losses. It won't eliminate them. So you've got to find a positive methodology. And that goes into all the other disciplines of the marketplace. But this has been about money management. And I don't know if I'll put this in the front. If you see it in the front of the video, I'll have the, the formula of which you can go over that the Super Mario and I'll go over that and if it's towards the end of the video then I guess I put it there and I'll talk about that but read this article and understand that money management is a path for you to develop discipline and gives you a formula to grow in the future reduce your losses when things are bad and increase your profits when things are good and that's basically it hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. All right, so here we are with the Super Mario Money Management. And I'm gonna go on and talk about exactly how this works and um, how to apply it. And it's very simple, you're trading based off of levels. And this is the idea of asymmetrical uh, money management using the fixed ratio uh, methodology. Uh, so let's go to our delta, which is whatever you want to start out, whatever you're comfortable with. I put $25 as an example here. Um, that could be 10x. So you can go 250 or 2,500 or 25,000, whatever you want it to be, what you're comfortable with trading. Um, of course, I myself uh, would only trade on a small amount until I know I have positive expectancy like I went over in the video. Uh, in my trading method, so I'm happy with the methodology I'm using and I'm making money off of it, right? Um, all right, so first you have your starting level and that's your delta is whatever you're, the amount you're trading with. Then from there, you need to choose what you're going to go over and use as your um, percentage of risk per trade. Um, and that could be 2%, it could be 4%. I made it between 4 and 8% based on this, and I think that's like the medium balance. Um, it's, it's a good amount. Uh, some people might want to start uh, half of that, 2 to 4%, so you can just reduce the amounts. Um, so it's variable. You know, It gives you flexibility in doing that. And what you want to do is when you grow a level, you double your money you want to increase your trade, you want to double your trade size. But when you reduce a level, let's say you went from uh, $100, you got up to level three, and then you lost half of it. Well, you too want to reduce your trade size. So you're at four to $8 per trade at three, and if you reduce it to half, then you go back down to two to $4 per trade. And this is the idea behind um, the fixed ratio money management um, that when you're not doing well you reduce your trading sizes and maybe you even trade less um, that's another something that would uh, help in uh, if you're not doing well uh, trading less is in my opinion a good ideology just like you're reducing your trading sizes um, so you see that by uh, what you have here now there's an optional rules you can withdraw 25% if you get to level three, which basically means you have a free ride. So if you withdraw 25% and you get to level three, you go from 25 to $100 on that level, right? So what does that mean? That means that you basically take out your original deposit. Now, if you take out your original deposit, that means you have no risk. What you originally started with, you bank, right? So I do this on this type of money management every three levels. Uh, so if something catastrophic happens where um, I go back a level and I'm just having a straight horrible time trading, uh, I have a bank in the background that goes over and lets me refill um, and continue trading uh, and not getting, not absorbing the losses directly. Uh, so it's basically like insurance, I guess you can 
call it. And that's the same ideology if you hear me talk about doing free rides where you get 100% return on a trade and you take out your original investment. Same ideology. Um, so you, you see the math that I'm using here? So it's kind of a, a straightforward approach and it's basically protecting yourself is what you're doing with this type of money management. And if you do that every three levels using, if you go up by the levels here, as you'll see by the rule set that I apply, um, you can see the path of growth that you would have. So the ideology is very simple. You're reducing your losses and increasing your profits. Make sense? Straightforward? Got it? Get it? Good. Um, all right, now let's go to the rule set. Now the rule set is pretty simple. Uh, like I said, every three levels up, you take out 25%. And what you're doing is after you get to level three, that basically is, uh, you know, you're doubling your profits, right? You're basically taking out your original investment when you take out 25%. So if you go from 25 to 50 to 100 and you take out 25%, that's $25. That would be your original investment. That means you can't lose because you have no risk because you took out your original investment. Kind of like the free ride ideal that I have when you double your um your trade size, like I'm kind of repeating myself, uh, where you go from, uh, you get a hundred percent return and then you take off half of it and you bank that. You take out your original investment and you keep going from there. So these are all good ideas to go over and grow your balance basically. Um, and if you follow this and you go back 50% of the previous level, that just basically means, um, by taking out that 25%, you're at the halfway mark at level two before you get back to level three, and then you just keep going. Now, another optional rule is you can trade 50% of the size at any one level if you don't like the market conditions or trade, right? So maybe you don't, you know, like the trade, so you cut the size in half. And this is kind of a dangerous thing to do because you kind of want to stay stable, but you know, maybe you have a good sense of market direction and whatnot. So by doing that, you're reducing your risk in a way. And um, that just means if you're trading at 4 to 8%, you go to uh, 2 to 4%. Now, this is, you know, that's tricky. Um, but if you don't like the market conditions, it gives you an option. Um, or if you don't like the trade that you're in, maybe it's a certain uh, crypto or whatever it is that you're trading um, and you're not comfortable with it. So there goes another variable option in the rule set. Uh, now, number three, you can trade 50% of the size till you pass 50% or the halfway mark of the next level. So what does that mean? That means you can reduce your risk and you can keep it at a certain level and you don't have to grow it to, the, to that level. You can just keep it. So that gives you, again, another variable um, option. Um, so if you see as you're growing and you're, you're changing the percentages, uh, you, you have the option of changing the numbers and making them vary based on how you interpret the market and what you believe. Now, an example here is now if you change the levels to fit your percentage trade instead of 25, let's say, trading one to two tr uh, a trade, you can change that to maybe $50. So you see how you're reducing your trade size but increasing your delta uh, or hundred dollars and it could be make it down to one or two percent but you get the idea there's variables that you can change and all I did was add a few different rule sets to it and you don't have to follow any of those rules you can just use the simple money management the way I marked it down um, but this gives you some options for you to think about or maybe even create your own how about that <laughs> anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have questions, I'll be in the room. And you guys have a great day, and I'll see you in the next video.